So let's talk about how you as the employer can maximize the chances of safely finding a legit person to work with without being scammed. All right. So first thing I want to recommend is if possible, try and look on the marketplace first. Go to the Unreal Marketplace or the Unity Marketplace or ArtStation or Gumroad or TurboSquid or something and just see if you can find it there. Because you would be surprised just how much more affordable and high quality assets can be when you just find them on the marketplace. Sometimes you can even get it for free. Unreal Marketplace gives free assets away every month. And the reason that you want to start with the marketplace first is because it's probably one of the lowest risk of being scammed. In many cases, a lot of these assets have previews and video examples, so you see exactly what sort of quality you're going to get ahead of time. It's simple, fast, saves a lot of time, and is often the most affordable option. For example, let's say you're making a game where the character has a spear, and you need spear attack and movement animations. Now let's say you plan it out and you figured that you're going to need about 50 animations. Well, if you do the math, the glass door has the average wage of a 3D animator at about $100,000 a year, which is about $50 an hour. Now, as someone who has animated quite a bit before, I'll tell you from personal experience that if I'm trying to make the animations look nice, it's going to probably take me about two to four hours on average per animation. So let's just set the average around three hours per animation. And if you need 50 of them, and the price is 50 an hour, if you just do the math, that's going to be about $7,000 of animation. Or you could go to the marketplace and find a spear animation pack with 50 animations for 30 bucks. It's literally a single transaction and it's way more affordable. So try the marketplace first. Now, let's just say what you want doesn't really exist yet, and you really need someone to make some new custom stuff just for you. Well, you really need to understand that the same way there's an entire business model of scamming designed to target desperate artists looking for work, there is also an entire business model of scamming designed to target honest employers looking to pay people for their cool work. And in a way, you are actually the bigger target because they know you have money. Whereas with the starting Arvis scams, they're just trying to see who bites. So if you are trying to employ people, just realize that you are the primary target for these scammers. Now, unfortunately, just about every website has scammers everywhere. Like you can literally watch big YouTubers like Jazza hire people on Fiverr and it turns out three out of three of them were scammers. And unfortunately, I've had the same experience. Personally, every single time I've tried to use Fiverr myself, it has always turned out to be a scam. People fake their portfolio, their resume, their bio. They say they graduated from some prestigious 3D art university, and when you actually get the file that you paid for, it's so poorly done that it's abundantly clear. They've never done this work professionally in their life, and that is why I always recommend people start the hiring process with word of mouth. People you know. Ask your friends or fellow artists if they personally know someone who has the skill sets that you're looking for. Always start with the real people in your life first before you start scouring the internet for potential hires. And yes, this is usually the most expensive option because you're paying local rates from your country, but I think you'll probably save more money than trying to roll the dice and finding people on Fiverr. The basic rule of thumb is the cheaper you go away from the industry standard price, the exponentially more likely it is for you to encounter scams. I personally went through multiple different texture guys who ended up not being who they said they were before I finally ended up with the one that I work with now. Yes, he's expensive, but he does a damn good job. He's fast, he's always on time, his quality is always top notch, and I know for a fact that every time I pay him, I'm getting exactly what I want without having to worry about any scams. So for me, the extra price is worth it because the safety, reliability, and security is guaranteed. Now hopefully, you will start to find good workers that you can trust, and then once you find them, you can get more references from them and start hiring from their network instead of just yours. Now, if you find yourself not having any local word of mouth for references, and you need to start scouring the internet for people, once you've decided to put yourself through this shit fest, the first thing you have to do as an employer is do all the research to understand as much as you can about the job that you are looking to fill. You should understand what the average salary for this position is. You should understand how long it takes to do the job. You should understand what software is typically used for this job. If you meet someone who says they're a 3D artist and then you ask them, oh, what software do you normally use for 3D modeling and animating? And they say something ambiguous or Photoshop, then you as the employer need to know that Photoshop is not a 3D software and probably move on to the next candidate. Now, I wish this next part was not necessary, but if you choose not to do this, you are doing it at your own peril. You should always look into the portfolio, the resume, the profile, and the bio description of the potential hire candidate. 
The reason this is important is because this is one of the easiest way to catch scammers pretending to be something that they're not. Scammers create new accounts and new identities every day. Many of them lose track of their lives. And if you do your research ahead of time, you can easily catch them off guard in an interview with simple questions like, cool, where did you learn these skills from, on your own or in school? And if they say school, then you can say, oh nice, which school? And if they struggle to answer that question quickly, red flag. If after a few seconds they somehow remember where they went to college, say, oh yeah, I heard of that university. What was that university's mascot again? And if they struggle to answer that question, double red flag. They should be able to tell you everything and anything that somebody who went to that university would know. If they contradict anything on their resume with stuff like, oh, I got my degree from Harvard, and you look at the bio on Fiverr and they went to the LA University of Film, red flag. Also, if they just tell you straight up false information, that's an immediate red flag as well. For example, if you know the average pro character artist takes about three to four weeks to make a character, and then you're interviewing someone and they say it'll take about four months, red flag. If you know it takes about an average of three to four hours to make a kick animation, and they tell you it's going to take about three days per animation working eight hours a day, red flag. If you need someone to change the colors of your texture map, which everyone here knows is like a 60 second process on Photoshop, and they tell you that's going to take four hours, red fucking flag. This is why I cannot exaggerate just how important it is for you to at least know the basic economics and workflow of the job that you were asking to fill. Otherwise, people are going to take advantage of the fact that you don't know how long things are supposed to take, and they're just going to extend the job as far as they can and drain as much money out of your bank account. Do your research. Also, if you're making an animated short film in Blender, looking to hire an animator, but the animator normally works in Maya, well then this animator isn't going to be very helpful for you. If you're making a project in Unreal 5 and you need the character's animations to be directly one-to-one -one compatible with the Unreal 5 mannequin, but the animator that you're talking to has only ever worked with the Rigify skeleton in Blender, it's not really a red flag, but it's also not really useful for your workflow because those two skeletons aren't going to be compatible without some major retargeting headache. So make sure that they are familiar with the software that your team expects. And the last piece of advice that I'd give for anyone with money looking to hire someone is always do a live audio call interview before you bring someone on board. I know this sounds harsh, but in reality, this is the actual easiest and safest way to make sure that the person you are considering is who they say they are. Remember, you are looking for people who are lying about their identity. If they are not willing to do a live audio call, this is the biggest red flag of all time. A simple Discord call could save your entire project. For example, if I find someone whose portfolio looks good and their name is David Walker, everything looks good and we audio call for the first time and I hear this. How can I help you? Where are you from? I'm from India. No, no, where are you right now? Oh, I'm in California. Dude, now we are seeing more red flags than a communist parade. And I know this sounds super politically incorrect, but I am telling you from experience, your native language is your first line of defense against bad actors. I don't care what your mother tongue is, if Spanish is your first language and you're trying to hire someone who speaks Spanish and you call them and it's super clear that they don't really speak Spanish, red fucking flag. Like, I remember talking to a few of my Spanish-speaking friends, and they would tell me that the different accents and dialects in Spanish are so distinct that they can tell whether someone is from Spain or from Argentina just by listening to them talk. And while that might sound crazy to me, likewise, this kind of works as an American too. If you also come from a specific part of America that has a unique dialect that lets you easily recognize an authentic accent, this might actually save you from getting scammed because, for whatever reason, scammers who speak English usually don't know how to fake specific dialects or accents. For example, I myself am from the South. I have an urban Southern accent. And if I interview someone in a call and I hear, Well, good afternoon, Mr. Skies. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview me today. What can I do you? for. Dude, when I hear that accent, I know for a fact that you come from the plains of Mustang, Oklahoma. And if that's what your bio says you are, then so far everything is looking good. Likewise, if I see an American name and I hear a thick Brooklyn accent coming out of you, then the chances of you really being David Walker have just exponentially increased. So take this with a grain of salt, of course, but I personally have found that when I hear someone on the other side with a distinct American or English accent, the chances of them being who they say they are tend to be a lot higher. Your country's mother tongue is one of your most valuable gifts you have. Don't be afraid to use it in order to verify who's who. And the last piece of advice I'd like to give is, instead of letting people come to you, 
try and look for them. For example, I personally know that eventually I would like to hire an animator for one to two five second animations per week, and I just want them to look pretty. So I spent some time around YouTube checking out animation reels and portfolios from artists that are looking for work. When I find a portfolio or a reel that I like, then I'll go into their bio and see if they have a contact email. And then I send an email from my dummy computer from my dummy account, and we just take things from there. Now, in my personal experience, I have found that when it comes to animating and modeling specifically, Koreans do a great job. Now, they're kind of expensive because they usually charge industry prices, but that is usually because they deliver industry results. So far, I've never been scammed by a Korean. It could happen, but they tend to be a pretty safe people to deal with, and they're usually very clear with what software they work with and how long it probably takes them. You know, I've also had some pretty good experiences with Spanish, Brazilian, and Mexican artists as well. You know, if you find real ones, they tend to do a pretty good quality work for fairly affordable prices. But they're usually a little bit hard to find unless you know a friend of a friend. Regardless, go out and look for new artists with portfolios you like, reach out to them, do all your research about the job ahead of time, and only hire after an audio call. Now let's finally address the problem of paying money and the possibility of not getting anything back. Now the best way I know to minimize this is to very quickly at the beginning, once you've gone through the whole interview process and you really think that this artist might actually be legit, send them a very small amount of down payment for the total service, something that you can afford to lose like five bucks or something. It does not have to be much. The point is for them to realize that you actually do intend and will send them money and once they have confirmed that they have received it, they can start working on it. And after the first day, they should screenshot what they've done. And if you look at it and it looks pretty good, then proceed with the rest of the payment whenever significant pieces are completed. Key phrase being when significant pieces are completed. If you are hiring an animator for 10 animations and you agree to pay $900 for the total, do not let them make all 10 animations and then pay at the end. Instead, each time they complete one, ask them to send you that file and then pay for that one immediately. Once that first transaction is completed from both sides, both of you can be a lot more confident that you are a real employer and that they are a real artist. Anyway, that's the method that's always worked best for me. I hope this information was useful. And again, if you have any further questions or you're not sure about something and you'd like to ask, just drop by our Discord. It has about 2,000 of us there who've been doing this for a while. And we could probably give you some useful advice or direction if you're not sure. Regardless, hope that helps. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.